I think I got really interested in models and, and stuck with collecting them because they were easy to pick up, easy to organize, easy to classify in a way, group in little boxes and sort them out. And quite frankly, it was something that I could bring home without uh, freaking out the rest of the family because they don't smell, they, uh, they can be put away for weeks at a time and pulled out again when I wanted to look at them again. But over time, I got more and more interested in the animal that makes these shells. You know, how, how do these animals live? What do they eat? Who's eating them? What's the ecology of the area where they are living? So and somehow, I went from being a shell collector to being a biologist. When you're working with invertebrates, and particularly mollusks, you're always in for surprises. We've been working with clams that have their shells so reduced that they essentially have an internal skeleton and they glide around on a foot like a garden snail would. At the same time, we've encountered snails that glue their shells to a piece of rock or a piece of coral and they sit there like a clam and filter feed in the water. Fortunately, I'm not alone in this. There are friends and colleagues with similar interests around the world in many different places, many different countries. And uh, gratefully, there are places like the Feet Museum that have the necessary scientific collections and the scientific laboratories that allow us to study these animals as a team. So if you want to learn more about the Bible Tree of Life project, see more of the bivalves, meet some of my colleagues,